You're listening to The Dave Glover Show. Welcome back, guys. A few minutes past 5 p.m. So a few weeks ago, when I was filling in for Glenn Beck, as I do from time to time, we had uh, Congressman Thaddeus McCotter on, who's running for president. And uh, and I liked him. He's he's my age and uh, an attorney and plays guitar and... So there you go. He, he, I was his to lose. Uh, but everything he said, I understood. Thought he was a smart guy. And I haven't seen him on any of, the, any, any of the, the debates or heard him really talked about in the mainstream media. So we wanted to have him on again and find out why that is, what's going on. Uh, Congressman, great to talk to you again. Oh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for the bumper music, little Beatles. There you go. So, yes. so help us understand this, because obviously you have the people, uh, the Republican candidates who we all see on the debates. How did they get to be there? and you not get to be there. I don't understand. Well, they have different criteria for different debates. And let me say up front, look, I'm a First Amendment guy. People can have whoever they want on by whatever criteria they want. It just gets frustrating when you get different sets of criteria. And if you're not on the stage, it makes it very difficult for you to get poll numbers. Yeah. It makes it even more difficult to get poll numbers is when they don't list you on polls. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, what, are some of the, what are some of the criteria that you don't there. fit? <laughs> it's Well, like, uh, let's use the Fox debate, for instance. We called and asked, and... We got one answer, and then we find out that they meant something else. And then <laughs> next thing you know, a couple of days later, Gary Johnson's in, and I'm very happy for Gary. Uh, but that was something that even surprised their partner, the Florida GOP, Yeah, that he was in because it wasn't the cri- not according to the criteria they thought Fox was using. I don't know. I mean, I get it if a guy like me, a radio show host, says, hey, I'm running for the presidency. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be. I'd say, like, oh, whatever, Skippy. But mm-hmm. if a U.S. congressman, you'd think that would immediately qualify you as a serious candidate. Well, more importantly to me, it's it's when you introduce something like a bill that I have, H.R. 2889, which is my bill that I worked on with Peter Ferrara to fix Social Security. And it's been introduced. And you have a press conference. We do a, a presentation at Heritage Foundation. And yet some stations uh, don't cover it. Some stations pretend it never happened. And that's not helpful to trying to get a poll number, even if you happen to be on the poll. Now, now this is going to sound like a, a silly question, but how much of politics your politics is politics for example you introduce this bill if, if uh, you were a better known congressman or whatever it was would people be saying oh yeah yeah 2889 this is serious stuff or do they just kind of pat you on the head and say you know what uh, a couple terms from now we're going to take you seriously well as the former member of the house leadership for four years i was the fourth ranking republican in the house so and <laughs> you know and this isn't something you just make up and get a score from the chief actuary of social security it wasn't written on a cocktail man. And so the, the reality is, is that if they don't want you in the debates, there's a way to keep you out of the debate. Mm-hmm. And so you just have to keep your nose to the grindstone, do what you think is right, and take it to the American people. And when the, when the time comes, be ready. So, so Congressman, let's, let's put you in the debates. So you, you've, you've seen them. We've seen them. And you're sitting at home watching the television and, and probably you know, yelling at the TV the way we would at football or something. What would you have liked to have said on certain issues? Get your message out there to St. Louis? Well, first, let me be fair. Uh, so one of the debates, I was watching American Pickers in between. <laughs> you just got a lot of votes right there. Yeah, right there. and then I wound up watching the DIY network. They were building a house. <laughs> and then the last one, I watched the Tigers crush the Chicago White Sox on their way to the Central Division pennant. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. So we have our, you know, if you've seen them once, you know, and you read the bumper sticker, it doesn't, you know, yeah. the point yeah. of watching them read it off uh, on a stage. But what I would have liked to hear about is, again, Concrete entitlement reform, Social Security, this isn't a plan, this isn't a complaint about what we should call it. This is an actual bill that would be the greatest reduction of government debt and spending in history. Not my, the chief actuary of Social Security says it'll save $8.5 trillion, and it relies on cutting existing government to help fund uh, the startup. So to me, that's the type of thing that needs to be in the debate. We need to hear about getting capital and access to credit increased in the United States by using free market forces to end, uh, finally, the failed banks on Wall Street, ride on the taxpayers or on the Federal Reserve. We need to make sure that we have a real free market solution to the housing crisis, which I've put forward. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about, uh, in the United States, the fact that we're a country at war and that we have to deal and have a strategy for success and winning in Afghanistan, Iraq, as well as dealing with Iran, and as well as dealing with situation that we find now in Egypt, unfortunately, and with communist China as a strategic threat, rival model of governance. These are just some of the types of things that we're not hearing. 
and that I would really love to have had the opportunity to bring into the debate. Yeah, I, I, I find it frustrating, and I'm not running for the Oval Office. You must find it galactically frustrating that the coverage you not, – not all of it, to be fair, but when you hear someone say – Michelle Bachman has weird eyes or Rick Perry. He seems so president. You know, it's like, well, let's talk about reality. And you know what? Back in, I don't know, maybe in the 20s and 30s, people did say things like this. But it just seems that we have this cult of personality and it's how do they look? How do they carry themselves? How would they this? How would they that? And you hear so few facts so few just well that makes sense you know it's all about presentation and oh this guy he really this was a great point for him and when newt gingrich put this guy in his place and it becomes very frustrating to mm-hmm. me it's spectacle over substance and it's, me- it's the media driven narrative and if you're somebody like me that wants to do substance and doesn't have a nice head of hair either real or purchased <laughs> uh, what tends to happen <laughs> is they they, they, you, they don't you don't uh, yeah. get cast in the uh, production what do you, uh, Congressman, what do you think of the, the president's jobs bill? Uh, the same thing I thought of his last stimulus bill, mm-hmm. the double-dip stimulus. I voted against the lame duck tax deal, precisely knowing they'd be back, that they would wind up uh, asking to raise taxes, and the things that Republicans voted for as part of that, that would be back to be used against them. I don't want to divert the payroll tax away from Social Security towards consumption. It's not going to be anything but a short-term gimmick. I don't want to see, as we did in lame duck, temporary tax relief continued in exchange for an increase permanently in something like the death tax. I don't think that this administration understands job creation. They really don't. And I think that it's a mistake for Republicans to think that at some, at some point that doing the same thing under the same circumstances will result in anything but the same disastrous consequences we've seen before. So, Congressman, when you see the uh, the low approval ratings for Congress, for, for your own body, do you look at it and say, if people really understood what we're about and what we're doing, they wouldn't have such a low opinion? Or do you say, eh, that's about right? No, I, I trust the American people. Right now, they're very unhappy. One of the things that does cause a bit of consternation is not about how I'm treated in the process. It's the fact that things that I'm talking about, like restructuring the Wall Street banks, the fact they're still being bailed out. And talking about communist China's unfair trade practices and how they are a strategic threat and how I don't think they should be the 21st century's leading nation. These are things that real people are talking about, and they hear nothing about it out of Congress. They hear the same arguments over and over again in a situation uh, that is designed not to address fundamental problems that they perceive are happening in the country. So what can people do when, when you're with me, uh, Glenn Beck, there's 10 million. Now we got a couple hundred thousand, not an inconsequential number. People out there who hear you, they like what you're saying. What can they do to help you, uh, to help you along and, and maybe even to get you included into some of these debates? What do they do? Well, I think that they just need to continue to go to my website, which they do and volunteer, mccotter2012.com. But importantly, utilize a social network. It's one of the beauties, and I think that, uh, Mr. Beck and obviously others are innovators in this area where they're utilizing the new technologies not to be bound by the same old system of a handful of newspapers or a handful of networks. And that's what allows people to get the message out and to continue to build support, even if you're not uh, receiving coverage in the mainstream media. Uh, Congressman Danius McConnor from Michigan will continue to follow you. We'll continue to talk to you and good luck. Thank you very much. All right, my friend.